Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this evening's entertainment. This ancient At the turn of the last century, performing Egypt. autopsies on the ancient dead was a popular parlour spectacle. Mummy unwrapping parties were extremely popular in the Victorian era. There was a, a kind of mummy mania. People were unwrapping mummies and interested and curious about what they contained. Oh, that's disgusting. This gruesome practice spawned a trade in bodies and an industry of fakes. A fake mummy, it could be a human body, or it could be just textiles, or just sawdust wrapped with textile. Some of these mummies found their way to museum collections. And now, scientists seek to uncover their stories. These days, we no longer unwrap mummies. Not even museums do it. Now, that's more respectful, and of course the mummy doesn't get damaged. But it does mean these guys remain more mysterious. And a mummy that's been donated to the museum, rather than found in a proper archaeological dig, is even more mysterious. It's one such mummy that captivates Dr. Jan Tristant. This mummy is a mystery because we don't know anything. The mummy has no face, has no age, no sex, no name. It is an adult, but what happened to the mummy? Is it a fake? It will take a team to solve this ancient mystery. Biocultural archaeologist Dr. Ronica Power is an expert in ancient human remains, and she'll determine markers of identity, like age and sex. Meeting each of these individuals from the past is like meeting a new person, and so I use science to let it tell its story. Forensic anatomist Dr. Mia Satisno will bring us face to face with the deceased, and possibly tell us how they lived and died. With our forensic thinking caps on, it's like you have a big jigsaw puzzle and trying to figure out where to start. And then suddenly, you know, it'll start to fall into place. Okay, you can have the trolley, please. The Australian Museum oversees the mummy's move from Macquarie University, which has been its resting place for the last 30 years. The move is painstaking, but it's the first step in reclaiming this person's identity and learning something about their time in history as seen through their eyes. We plan to scan this mummy at Macquarie University Hospital using a medical CT scanner. We will not have to unwrap the mummy, but we will do that virtually using the computer and the CT scan. Meanwhile, the detective work begins in the archives of the Australian Museum. It turns out the mummy was purchased in Egypt in the 1900s and donated to the museum. The archives turn up another surprise, X-rays taken in the 1970s. Though poor in quality, they reveal new information to Jan and Ronica as they begin a hands-on examination. It's clear something strange is going on. We don't have either of the sides of the bony pelvis. The sacrum and the vertebral column is completely missing. So definitely the problem with this mummy is this part. Yeah, and we will have to explain, to and I hope the CT scan will give us the answer, we will have to explain why this part has been so disturbed. Could the missing bones be a sign of trauma, or perhaps shoddy embalming? Or is this mummy a fake? Hopefully, the CT scan will reveal more. This is the domain of Professor John Magnuson, Head of Radiology at Macquarie Medical Imaging. Breathe in. Hold your breath. Well, this is the moment. We're about to virtually unwrap the mummy, and I can tell you what, there's some really excited scientists here this morning. This medical grade CT scanner will reveal intimate details on the mummy in 3D. It'll be like just looking under the bandages, getting a view no one's seen for thousands of years. There's the skull coming through. Okay. Look at that. Wow. Okay. 
Yeah. And there's more skin than we're right Oh, into feet. the feet. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah, yeah. the feet so, are well preserved. And okay. organs, yeah. organs are missing. Yeah, all the organs, organs are missing. missing. Yeah. Okay. And there's something reinforcing, which is running down the middle of it. Some sort of wooden, yes. some rods Fantastic. that have been put in place to give it shape. Wow, and that didn't show up on the x-rays at all. This is extraordinary. Where's the spine? <laughs> I know, it's the million dollar question. There's yeah. an amazing amount that's... It's missing. It's long gone, then yeah. it's been put back together yes. to give the shape that you'd expect. Yep. Even with the wooden reinforcing rods to keep it all hanging together. But definitely, it doesn't look like a modern fake mummy. It looks like a real mummy. But it's been reconstructed. Completely. Absolutely reconstructed. Is the reconstruction a sign of foul play? Has the mummy been tampered with, then rewrapped? Only further analysis will tell. While the team waits for the virtual 3D reconstruction, the mummy settles into its new resting place at the Australian Museum, where conservation work begins. Loose pieces of the wrapping and coffin wood provide an opportunity for carbon dating. Are the mummy and the coffin the same age, and therefore a matching pair? It's been very interesting, very surprising in fact. The lid dated at 1400 BC, and the base of the coffin came out with a date of 800 BC. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> yes, 600 years difference. It's possible you can get some variation with much older wood being used or the part of the tree that is a much older core of the tree, but 600 years yeah. is a big difference. Yeah. So the other possibility is that they've actually recycled the wood or that they've actually taken a, an old coffin lid so it could have been the case, you know, that the client has said, I've got this great lid here, mm. can you make up a box for me? Yes, that's right. But then the uh, even bigger surprise was that the uh, mummy, it's 10 BC, the date we got. Ah, really? So how can you explain that? <laughs> well, what we were dating was the bandages, and the bandages potentially are younger than the body itself. Could it have been rewrapped at a later time in its history? Or simply was this a younger body that in 10 BC they decided to reuse an old coffin because it's a perfectly good coffin and we'll place our body in that. But what story is written in the bones? So. Wow, that is fantastic. The 3D scans are in and the team gathers to find out. And now we can rotate all the way around. Fantastic. I can start to get rid of the wrapping, layer by layer, and we end up seeing That's incredible. what's left of the skeleton wow. underneath. Now the mummy is unwrapped, and the details begin to unfold. John and I have had a close look at all of the scans, and overall it has to be said that during their life, this person experienced really quite good health and certainly no diseases that were chronic or enduring enough in nature to leave bony impressions on the skeleton. Again, considering what we can see on the skull, this would indicate that this individual is a male. We can see that there's complete dental eruption, indicating this is probably over 18 years of age, and also the ossification of some of the joint structures indicate that this is probably an individual of around about 30 to 35 years of age. So we're looking at a young to young middle adult. Fantastic. And what happened to the right arm? There is a cut mark. Let's have a look at that. So there's the humerus, the upper arm. And if I zoom right in on that, you can see that there's two slice marks sure. coming into that. We can see that there has been some sharp force trauma, where there has been a sharp object that has come in and affected... But was this trauma the cause of death, or inflicted after death, when the mummy was disturbed? Can Mia's forensic examination provide the answers? We can unwrap the mummy from the uh, CT scans. We can actually conduct a virtual autopsy. We've got exciting results. He actually died with a sharp implement, a blade-like implement known as a kopesh. 
It's a vicious, curved sword that literally cuts to the bone. As we rotate to the right side of the mummy's face, you can see quite radiating fractures yeah. of the right zygomatic arch. Can you see? Yeah. Where yeah. it's so sharply cut. So that, that weapon has gone right mm -hmm. through there. Right there. So it's like, it's yeah. like from top across to the midline. Yeah. And then secondly, with possibly the blunt end, a blood trauma smash, boom, to the lower jaw. See, the, the first molar flew out, got dislodged <laughs> pretty much, and yeah. some... The Kapesh attack happened. also explains the cut marks. Can you see the, uh, the humerus, the arm bone yeah. there? Yeah? yeah? Can you see the cut, that chisel cut? Oh, yeah. yeah? yeah. So that would have gone right through, possibly hitting some major vessels. And twice it happened. And at one stage, I'm sure, it got lodged into the bone such that it was hard to take out again. Oh. To, ah, yes. You know, <laughs> physically pull it out. Mm. So, uh, but we've, that have led to major bleeding and injury Yes, like yes. Most likely, it would have hit major arteries and he would have bled out. It's a horrifying account of the mummy's last moments. But Mia can bring him back to life using a 3D print of the skull made from the scans. Many things. Based on the forensic osteological examination, I am able to deduce information such as the race of the anonym. It's primarily Caucasoid, the features. And if you look from the profile, see how the nose is going to be very projecting? Yeah, yeah. A typical big projecting yeah. nose of a Caucasoid male. However, he does have telltale signs of the mongoloid race. For example, the nose here, despite it going to be big and projecting, yeah. it's also going to be wide, right. which is oh, more you. definitive for mongoloids. Mia can now reconstruct what he looked like. The first step would be to attach tissue thickness markers. And those tissue markers were based on database of the Egyptian population. Then it was basically replacing muscle by muscle. And then only tiny amounts of fatty tissue, then skin, and then it was full on to detailing the features. It's a striking face that bears the scars of his profession. He was a warrior slash soldier, trained from as little as five years old. And that was evident from the remodeling of his bones. He's very built in terms of muscle. The formation of the muscle attachments on the bones were very prominent. He pretty much was muscle man. It was evident that he was more agile with the right arm, possibly to hold a weapon, whilst the other arm was most likely held in position most of the time, which is akin to holding a shield. But what about those missing bones? So he was, he was mummified. Now, for some reason, possibly 800 years later, at around the 10 BC, he was unwrapped. His pelvic bones were taken out. His vertebral column was removed as well. And he was then rewrapped such that he was thinner, he was shorter, and why? To fit a sarcophagus likely to be for a female. But why our warrior sleeps in a woman's coffin is a mystery that's yet to be solved. <laughs>